One of the British newspapers described this as a pivotal moment for your company this morning. Is that slightly overestimating it or is that a fair reflection of reality? No, I think that's an absolutely fair re reflection of reality. If you look at um, Jaguar Land Rover, today is a really historic day for us. This is the first ever uh, production uh, plant to be launched for Jaguar Land Rover anywhere in the world. So uh, with a company with decades of history, for us to be able to do this and to actually show the world this world-class production facility and the Evoke was fantastic today. Chris, are you a little bit disappointed that it couldn't happen sooner when we look at some of your rivals? They've been in China far longer than you are because you've just started this joint venture. No, we're not disappointed about the timing. We actually only established this joint venture uh, late in 2011. So we've actually launched uh, this joint venture in just under two years, which, which is a fantastic achievement by all of the team. Chris, um, the headlines are full of data today talking about the fact that China's economy is now only growing at a rate that we saw back in 2009, i.e. not exactly great growth by historical standards. Um, can you give us a sense of the demand that you're seeing for the Evoke at the moment, what your expectations are, where you see the economy going? Yeah, so there's lots of obviously uh, news stories about the economy in, in China, but for Jaguar Land Rover, this is a hugely successful market for us, and we're seeing continued growth, and we'll continue to see growth this year. And for the Evoke, it's really been a, a groundbreaking product for us, and, and last year sold over 30,000 cars. How many can that increase, Chris? If you look at you know the, the number of cars you may sell in China over the next one to two years, thanks to this new factory, is it exponential? Are we talking 30% extra? Are we talking 50% more? Yeah, we've spoken with everybody here today, and, and what we're actually focused on is the quality and delivering the world-class quality. We don't want to try and get into a position where we're chasing volume and just trying to chase uh, numbers. So our real focus is to make sure the cars we build here in China are of world-class quality and the customers really aspire to buy the car. If we can do that, we'll be hugely successful in China. Chris, can we talk a little bit about pricing? When, when you look at the big German operators and what they did once they started manufacturing in China, we saw around a 15% price decrease as a result of the impact of tariffs coming off a little bit. Is that what we're going to see with the Evoque in China as well? You're going to be able to, to be a little bit more sensitive on the price. And also, if you could just give us, give us your thoughts on whether or not the trend of having very big price gaps between what you sell in China and the rest of the world, whether or not that's sustainable. Yeah, so today really is about the launch of the facility, not about the launch of the car, although we have shown people the Evoke uh, coming off the production line today. So you're going to have to wait just a little bit longer to understand what we're doing with the pricing of the vehicle, and we will talk about that in the, in the next month or so. With regards oh, Chris, to the, um, the difference in vehicle pricing, that's exactly why we're here. Sorry, could you repeat? Sorry. No, yeah, carry on, Chris. Just, just in terms of, you were just about to talk about the tariffs, so just give us a sort of sense okay. of, of the impact that that is going to have. Yes. Yeah. So, so with regard to the tariffs and the, um, and the cost of the vehicles, that's exactly why we're standing here today launching our first locally produced product. Over time, we will launch more Jaguar Land Rover cars from the joint venture. And we have announced today that by 2016, we will have three cars that are being manufactured here in Changshu, two Land Rovers and one Jaguar. And at the same time, we're building a world-class aluminium body facility so that we can invest and develop cars in new technologies. The future is really exciting for us right now. So, Chris, if we speak to you in five to six years, how many new factories will you have in China? Well, who knows? Um, Today is about our first car, really, so um, for us, it's about celebration of our first facility. We have installed capacity here for 130,000 cars, and as, as we move forward, we'll listen very carefully to our customers, and if we need to, then we'll adapt our plans moving forward. So who knows? Uh, China, China never ceases to amaze in terms of the speed that it can move. What about, what about Coventry amazing? What about, what about the, the black country and Birmingham and what happens uh, up in the, uh, 
uh, in the west of uh, the UK as well in terms of how the workers feel there. Is, is this the thin end of the wedge? I know the unions are broadly on board with this at the moment, uh, but does this any way detract from manufacturing capability in the UK? Well, you're talking to a Coventry kid. I was born and bred in Coventry and have uh, spent all of my life in Coventry. So, no, this in no way is uh, damaging to Jaguar Land Rover in the UK. In fact, it's, it's p potential growth that we're fulfilling. So the car that we're launching today, the Evoke, is actually launching in Halewood up in Liverpool. And Halewood's already been running at maximum capacity. So this just gives us a chance to continue to grow. But in no way is this a threat to the Jaguar Land Rover UK facilities, which are all doing very well and performing very strong. Chris, congratulations. Thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. Chris Bryant from Jaguar Land Rover.